Can everyone hear me okay? Perfect. So just to help me with uh, the people in the room, who in the room here is from a research background? If you could show your hands, please. What about um, from a ag tech company? And uh, what about from a farm manager, owner, producer? What a great mix. So uh, thank you for your time. As Ollie said, I'm, I'm head of technical service for elders. I, I've been lucky enough that I've been in agriculture now, in agribusiness specifically for 24 years. Uh, I was, I'm just about to start my 19th year in elders. Um, so I've had a reasonable stint. But I, my background is agronomy. So I've spent um, nine years as an agronomist based out of Elders Murray Bridge, but I was an agronomist across the Fluro Peninsula, KI, Upper South East and South Australian Mallee. Um, in that time, uh, from, a, from a, I suppose, development point of view and adoption of, of technology, for me, the, the real take-home was no-till farming. I mean, what no-till has delivered to Australian uh, and South Australian producers is just quite astonishing. And if you talk about practice change and adoption, I think we can learn a lot from that. Right across the whole value chain, we were, it was a united front. Everyone got involved in, in making no-till work. And today, I, I would suggest from a broad acre perspective, most producers uh, uh, adopted no-till. Um, which, if you think about that, it, it's had an impact both from an environmental point of view, from a social point of view, and from a financial point of view across that whole value chain. And for me, when, when we talk about ag tech and adoption, that's where, that's where the key um, wins will be for us and everyone that's involved in ag tech. So when we talk about... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really focus my presentation around, obviously, making sense of remote sensing, and, and Moira Smith will come up shortly and, and talk about what we've been working on. For me, from a, a true benefit point of view, when we talk about producers and working with farmers across Australia, there is three key benefits that we need to focus on. So these are the things that prioritise what we're going to do. Um, it, it has to save time. We have to have efficiencies, and not just efficiencies in labour, but efficiencies across our whole business businesses. Um, when we're talking about uh, we need to improve yield and we need to improve dollars, so actual profit. If we can tick all those boxes, with that, that will make sense of what we're doing. My message to ag tech companies in the room is really understand your value proposition, and, and that's the value proposition of all the stakeholders involved, and know how you're going to go to market. Too often in my position, in my role, I, I see technology coming into the market that clearly hasn't been tested and it hasn't been, um, I suppose, proven uh, to the farmer with a true value proposition. This is something that we need to work on, we need to work on hard. Must-haves, it has to be a differentiated offer, so it can't be just a me too. It also has to be commercial reality. It has to be affordable. It has to make sense. You know, it can't be something that, that, that is too expensive and there's no return on investment. And it must be a sustainable pathway to market. Quite often we see ag tech introduced to the farming system, but it actually hasn't got any backup support and it actually hasn't been tested. So it's really critical we get this right. So moving on from that, as we know on a big scale of things, consumer demands are changing. We now have an environment which people are demanding a safer, safer and healthier op option when they're buying their produce. Socially, we have a society wanting to make sure that we are sustainable in, in our farming practices. We need to be visible, demonstrating a sustainable farming practice. Australia is seen as a safer and healthier option for producing food, but we need to be more visible around this. These changes, while they are causing some challenges for many, they are also causing opportunities as well. Ag tech and remote sensing is and has the potential to make farmers' lives easier better and more profitable. So the reality today for me, agriculture technology that increases farm production and efficiency has grown traction in the last few years. Reduction in costs and make, making things more affordable. For example, satellite imagery. Once upon a time, this was only affordable to the military. Now it's, now it's technology that many, and you'll see a lot of that today, we are using to enable what we, these efficiencies in farming practices we're looking for. Farmers have greater access to market data than they ever have before. Our research tells us that most farmers are investing in specialty services and advice. Greater than $100 million across Australia is invested into consultancy. 
farmer abilities to understand more around their farming system has meant they are re less reliant on suppliers for information around crop production and infield support. So for me, in my role, the role of an agronomy is changing. Sensors and automation is reducing costs and improving efficiency. I keep coming back to the true benefit, time, time, time. So agronomist consultants will be doing less walking, more talking. We will be moving from precision to decision agriculture. I'd like to introduce Maura Smith from DCAT. Great. I'll put this down a bit so you can see me. Thanks, Graham. Um, yeah, welcome, everybody. It's uh, fantastic to see so many people here wanting to hear about what we're talking about in remote sensing. So my background, just briefly, um, I'm an engineer. I've worked for over 20 years on remote sensing, but mainly for the defence industry. So in national security and defence is my background. I know remote sensing works. We've seen it do all sorts of amazing things, taking it from defence and security, and knowing as sensors have become cheaper, as processing has become affordable as well, as handheld devices and mobility allows you to take this data and do something useful with it. Uh, we've set ourselves up, myself and two other co-founders, to bring this technology into Australia and focus on the ag sector. So we've partnered with Elders, we're delighted to be Elders Remote Sensing Partner, and it's all about us working closely to bring the benefits of what we know, what we can squeeze out of sensors to make a difference to you folks uh, with the deep expertise and right reach of elders. So the focus today is really to show you some examples of how it's being used. How can you re use remote sensing? Is it going to save you money, time and so on? So that's what I'll get to. And just briefly, I thought I keep using this word, re this term remote sensing. What does it actually mean? What do I mean by remote sensing? So if I just click, hopefully this will work. Here we go. So remote sensing, there's a definition for you from the dictionary, but effectively it's any sensor that is not physically connected to whatever it's measuring. So for you guys, you'll be very familiar with cameras. You may be using drones. Uh, you'll use satellite data. That's a remote sensing method. But also, I'm sure you, a lot of you are familiar with um, uh, weather stations or maybe IoT devices and so on. So we like to take all that information, or as much of that as possible, or tailor the right pieces of data to answer the problems that matter uh, to agriculture. And that can be agronomists, that can be growers, that can be uh, large producers. So that hopefully sets the scene when I, when I refer to remote sensing. Uh, what can it do? Well, how many of you here use remote sensing, use sensors? Hopefully, vast majority. Who thinks, is, does it bring benefit? Do you think it's bringing value in your businesses? Okay, so that's good. There's a few, thank goodness. But there's so much talk, there's so much hype about using sensor data, and you get a pretty picture. And we've had people say, so what? What do I do with this? What's it telling me? And that's really the important thing. So yes, there's lots of things that remote sensing can do, but what we're trying to show you today is a little sample of some real things where it's made a difference. And do please come and talk to us afterwards. We'll be delighted to tell you more. So yes, we detect, we classify, we can track um, pr production, we can track performance, we can predict yield, a whole range of things that uh, remote sensing offers. And that's sometimes satellites, sometimes it's with aircraft data, sometimes it's a whole mixture of IoT devices. But it's letting you make decisions and action the data. Why does it matter? Well, I think I've already alluded to that, and we spent a lot of time, I've been delighted to go right across Australia and talk to as many farmers and producers as possible to figure out how we can be relevant to you. And, uh, and it's really about giving you benefits, tangible benefits. There's so many providers coming out saying, well, you know, can we eat a little bit of your profit, please? Here's another few hundred dollars. Um, what's that going to return to you? Why are you going to invest in this technology? You have to see a good return on your business. That's either an efficiency, your time saving, or it's actually a bottom line benefit. And we are utterly focused on delivering that. So why adopt remote sensing other than to gain all those benefits, but you've got to get um, some belief that those are going to happen. And we'll show you some examples later. But um, as I say, the challenge for us is very much delivering that value to your businesses. And I'm going to hand over back to 
uh, Graham to talk a little more. How you navigate this massive landscape. You might wonder what this image is and why I'm showing it to you, but I thought it was so relevant. This is a snapshot last year of ag tech businesses <laughs> operating in Australia and the kinds of things that are available to you. It's just the plethora out there, uh, and so hopefully Graham can talk a little bit more. Yeah. Thanks, Maura. I'm just conscious of time. We will keep moving quite quickly because I think it's important to show you some examples of what we've been working on. But our challenge today in our partnership with DCAT was, and remote sensing in general was how do we make sense of the information? And there's two parts of that. I want to talk about the dollars, that sense, but also actually understanding the information. So from, an, from a company point of view, using our advisors, it, it's that journey of, of uh, training people and having them understand the data. When talking ag tech in Australia, I quite often hear people talking around how farmers aren't good at adopting ag tech. Um, that's absolute rubbish. Um, th they are really good at adopting ag tech as long as it has a true return on, imbe return on investment. It has also become very obvious to me that, that producers are sick of paying subscriptions. Uh, I was lucky enough to attend a vote last week and that was very clear feedback that we were receiving. Um, and, and they're also sick of be being guinea pigs. To, you know, to trial stuff. Everything needs, in, in my opinion, our role in, in, in elders and, and our partnerships that we have with various people that you're going to hear from today is actually helping them validate things before they go to market so they are tested and, and, and we can go in there with confidence knowing that they're actually going to work. So for me, the answer is very simple. Um, when it comes to ag tech, it needed to be driven by our advisors. We didn't want to just put technology in the hands of producers alone. We had to be there to support it along the way. That's my key message when it comes to the partnerships and why it's really, really important. Um, so why, in, why Ag Intel? To get more specifically into the, to, into the program that we use for our agronomy team, it does solve problems faster. It's simply, for me, it was the most affordable and quality remote sensing program that I'd seen to date. Um, having a partner that strategically works with elders alone also helped us be more coordinated in our approach. Now to get on to more of the examples, Maura. I'll do my best. Uh, so I've split this into showing some benefits, some examples in hort and in pastures and, and then on to cropping as well. So bear with me as I go through these if it's not your sector. Um, OK, there's a lot of information in this slide. Just trying to show you some examples and the benefits. If we look at the image in the top right, and you'll see, oh, here, we, here we go, here's another pretty picture. And there's a whole bunch of colours on this image, and you've got a scale on the right-hand side. This is a, a set of, this is almond trees, almonds growing that we were monitoring. Why was this important? Why did it make a difference to the grower? They started to drive their irrigation using the information that we were able to provide them. This is 10 meter resolution data. You'll see a lot of 10 meter resolution data today. Um, people might say, well, that's because that's free data. Well, that data provides an awful lot of insights and information in it. And as you go to higher resolution imagery, you get wonderful clearer pictures, but you generally get less information in the sensor. We can combine them all. But anyway, on this particular block in almonds, people say, well, is 10 meters any good for a tree crop? Yes, it is. It's been proven out, and it's made a difference to these guys in their yields and their quality from this information. Um, the bottom right picture is an example where uh, some potato growers said, no, we really want to see this 30 centimetre resolution. That's about the best you can get from a satellite at the moment. Or, of course, you can go down to drones and get higher resolution as well. Um, and uh, again, value in helping the irrigation and the management and the quality of the spuds. Over uh, for the viticulture folk, uh, you'll see other folks here talking about the benefits of uh, remote sensing in grapes. And again, you've got this trade-off of resolution versus information, and we combine the, the two. So we've got an example here where we've worked with a soil moisture probe company, but we can work with any moisture probe that you have. And rather than giving a relative measure of the topsoil moisture, we can give you absolute measures across your block of subsoil moisture, saving you a lot of money, one probe, and then we can c cover your block for you. That's made a difference to vineyards. They found leaks they didn't know they had, real tangible financial benefits. And the graph at the bottom shows how they drove one Shiraz block to be like another one. They were benchmarking with the Ag Intel tool, trying to drive quality, couldn't quite understand why are we not achieving the soils the same? Why are we not achieving the, the same in the other uh, block? So just some very quick examples of the kinds of things we touch in horticulture. Livestock. 
Again, number of examples, probably have to go quite quickly. The one I want to concentrate on is feed on offer. We're aware that's such a critical measure, particularly now, the drought, the lack of uh, any feed anywhere. We can find it and we can also give you um, the amount of it. Uh, and that's every three days or so over Australia. Um, Finding water as well, that's incredibly important. So in this example, yes, it's a dam, but we can find the water, we can quantify it for you. And then sadly, recently, of course, with the fires, um, we have technology we can see through the clouds, we can find the fires, we can look at fire damage, we can look at the soil impact, uh, all remotely, and, uh, and work with producers and growers to try and um, get back to where they need to be as quickly as possible. And finally, in cropping, so many, so many options to choose from in these examples. I picked out just a few. Um, top left, yield prediction. We've been working on this for years. <laughs> well, to, as Graham says, validation is a huge part of what we do. Um, when we were developing technology uh, for the military, you know, lives depend on it. So you have to prove out what you're doing. And anything goes to market is proven here. So we can, or across cereal crops, across wheat, we, this year, for the first time, we were delivering to our customers two months ahead of harvest what the yield was going to be, uh, and, and accurately. Um, we've got examples up here, top right, of crop growth stage. This happens to be cotton, um, but we can give you a crop growth stage in a whole range of crops. Uh, again, driving benefits, helping you plan better. And the bottom, uh, just out of interest, I haven't talked about diseases, I haven't talked about finding problems. That's a big thing that remote sensing can help you with. Uh, down in the bottom, we're looking at a financial benefit of being able to find frost damage on the cereal crop. Uh, and um, I don't have time to go into details, happy to discuss it with you. But with the benefit of this product, uh, if the grower had had it, he would have saved, he wouldn't have lost uh, thousands of dollars, just even in this one block. So he became a, an advocate when he saw this. So um, a real whirlwind set of examples, hopefully giving you belief that tangible benefits proven out available right now to you and with agronomic support. Okay, um, I think we're down to... Yeah, yeah, we're really conscious. So I just wanted to finish there. Like from my point of view, we've got a great opportunity here in South Australia and in agriculture to utilise remote sensing. But also, for me, these are the priorities. These are the these are the changes that I'm really looking for. Both land aerial and base sensors, smart irrigation, um, genomics, um, unmanned aerial vehicles, robotics is quite, and farm management software. I think if we can collaborate across all these areas, we can really come up with some tangible benefits for for our producers. Thank you. Thank you.